What's going on, Multiply family? Welcome to church. We are so excited that you are here. So excited. And if this is your first time and you're ready to get connected, all you got to do is download our app. It's one of the best ways to get connected and stay connected. That's right. Well, service is going to get started in just a little bit. So uh, enjoy the rest of the countdown. What's going on, Multiply family? Welcome to church. We are so excited that you...
Hey, listen, not only is this dedication Sunday, but this is Extra Grace Sunday. Say Extra Grace. Extra Grace for the parking lot. Extra Grace for the coffee lines. Extra Grace for kids check-in. Extra Grace for the sound and the video and all of that. Tell three people around you, you get Extra Grace too. Ex extra Grace for everybody this morning. Lots of Extra Grace. Church, the Bible says that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of His people. So what better way to dedicate a new facility than to lifting up a shout of praise in this house? Come on, let's praise the Lord!
Come on, he's faithful, amen. Come on, I need you to shout if he's been faithful. Come on, he's been good. God, we give you all the glory in this place. Hey, turn around to somebody you don't know that's right around you. Give them your name, high five them, and you can be seated in this place. Well, good morning, Multiply. Good morning. Welcome home. Hey, let's turn these things off together, all right? Let's turn, turn these things off together. We don't want anyone to have a seizure, all right? So, so if we could sign, don't be that guy. Don't be that guy, all right? Let's turn the, If you don't know how to turn it off, turn to someone beside you. Don't tell you how to turn it off. Have them silence your cell phone at the same time, all right? Hey, we love to celebrate here at Multiply. And each and every week, one of the things we love to celebrate is all of the new people that God is sending here to multiply. If this is your first time worshiping with us today, I want you to know we're all new here. We're all, this is all of our first time ever being here. But if this is your first time at a multiply worship service and you have not yet stopped by our Connect Center, would you take the, the card in the back of the seat in front of you that says Connect and fill that out and stop by our Connect Center before you leave today? We're excited about what God is doing in your life and, and we want to see how we can partner with you in your spiritual journey. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Can, come on, can we put our hands together and let's welcome all of our guests in the house today. The Lord spoke to my heart and told me that I was going to pastor a church and showed me the kind of property it was going to be. And he told me that it was going to be the largest church in the county. We're standing on Union Street in Concord, and this is where it all started in 1958. 1958, we moved into our first building here on Rockland Circle. And in 1973, we built the auditorium here that seats 500 people. And in 1978, the congregation moved here to our present facility. This dream developed in the hearts of a young couple, Tom and Betty Whitney. Their dream developed the vision for Concord First Assembly. That vision continues today. And this is very clear. We must keep moving. Starts off at First Assembly of God, comma, Concord, North Carolina, as the name, which was then switched to Concord First Assembly, which then became CFA, and we kind of tagged it with Church for All and now Multiply Church, ever-changing to meet the needs of the community. Sometimes he's asking us to take some steps even when it doesn't make sense. You're an expert. You know what you're doing in your business. You know what you're doing in your family. You know what's going on in your life. And in the midst of all that, God calls you and he calls me to do something that goes beyond the intellect. And he says, tonight, are we ready to launch out into the deep? Today, we do just that. We leave the harbor and launch out. We take the baton and keep moving, standing on the shoulders of giants, building on the legacy of heroes of the faith. We declare today, we cross the threshold into a new era, picking up new mantles for new ministry, using new wineskins to reach new people, believing the words of Jesus that the fields are already ripe unto harvest. So we call forth the laborers to the question of if we respond here here am I, Lord, use me to the question of whenever we say now, today, we rise up and cross over into all the land, all the promises for all the generations. Hey, Multiply Church, can you help me welcome to this platform our founding family, Miss Joy and Betty Witten, and also former lead pastors, Pastor Rick and Susan Ross. Come on hands together. Let's honor these amazing couples, these amazing families today.
You may be seated for a moment. Church, the Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due. And I want, I want us to understand this about honor. I think sometimes we have the wrong idea of what to dishonor is. To dishonor is not to show a lack of respect. It's not to treat with contempt. To dishonor is simply to do this, to treat as common that which is not common. And can I tell you, this, this is not common. This is not common. 65 years of history, 65 years of legacy, 65 years, 66 plus years of faithfulness is not common. You look the same in those videos, right? That's what I like to think anyways. Not too many changes. <laughs> uh, so Betty and Joy, Pastor Rick and, and Susan. Oh, by the way, by the way, can I be the very first? Let this go down in Assemblies of God annuals. This is the first church that we get to honor and introduce Pastor Rick Ross as the new general treasurer for the entire Assemblies of God. Come on. Very exciting. Just, just happened this week. But Miss, Miss Betty and Joy, Pastor Rick and Susan, we honor you today for many things, but we honor you for your faith and your obedience. We honor you for your courage and your sacrifice. We honor you for your public ministry, the sermons, the songs, the creativity, the buildings, the ministries, but we honor you for your private prayer life as well. The things that went on behind the scenes that nobody will ever know and nobody needs to, but God, God knows. We honor you for your character and integrity. We honor you for your generosity. We honor you for your vision and continually leading change for new souls. We honor you for being our spiritual grandparents and our spiritual parents. We are so blessed and grateful. Multiply Church, one more time. Can we honor these amazing couples, these amazing people? And actually, why don't you just stay standing because I'm just gonna introduce, there's like a ton of titles, but I'm just gonna introduce him as the crossover pastor, Pastor Bill Balance and his wife, Mary Ann. Would you welcome them to the platform at this time? All of the, all of the, con so Extra Grace Sunday, we're also realizing it's a lot longer to get around the, the flat, that we need steps, like, anyway. <laughs> you, you, may be, you may be seated. Um, Pastor Bill, it wasn't too long ago that there was a phone call to Montana. We needed, I asked you if you would come here for these things, for to be the pastor of prayer, congregational care, senior adults, and lead associate pastor. So already, like, Fort four por portfolios. Um, I think I called strategically probably in February when it was negative 44 out there because, <laughs> because you, left, you left a lot of things. You left a lead pastorate. You left family. You left grandchildren. Um, they don't even need to know. Not everybody needs to know what all that you left behind, but the Lord knows. And oh, by the way, a year into this thing, will you take on an entire... Uh, another portfolio of building a building. I told, I told the congregation this on, I think it was Friday night, but um, one of the statistics, I don't know who said this, but, it, but I've heard it, that a lot of senior pastors actually don't make it much longer after a building program just because of the, the weight and all the, the stress of that. And can I tell you, I'm, I feel more energized and full of vision than ever because Pastor Bill. So one more time, as you enjoy all of this today, I'm telling you, Jesus and Pastor Bill are a really good team. Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Bill and Mary Ann. So you can be seated, you can be seated. See, it was eight years ago uh, next month that Pastor Rick accepted a new assignment, a new assignment to be the 
superintendent for North Carolina. And God began to prepare this church and prepare the heart of a man who would become our next pastor. <laughs> During that time of preparation, God gave you a word of crossover and a vision of a bridge and the word of all the land and all the promises. And over the past eight years, what God has done through your ministry is remarkable. We have gone from being one church in Cabarrus County to not only churches across North Carolina, but literally three continents now. <laughs> we have churches in South Africa and we have ch churches in South America because of the, the vision that God has given you. We went from a church that uh, we've always had a great school, but the school has expanded and grown tremendously and now we've added a university on top of that we've gone from being just a a uh, a food pantry to a a dream center we've gone from supporting 30 missionaries to over 120 missionaries i could go on and on and on to the exponential growth of the ministry of what god has done and then most recently you have led us i know bill has done a lot of it but it has you have carried a, a tremendous weight um, and a, a burden of faith to, to take us from across the street to bring us all here, all under one roof, all the generations under one roof, and we are forever thankful. And we have a small token. This is a picture of a bridge that's going to go over this, that uh, is actually going to be delivered to your house to go somewhere on your property that's going to have engraved on it all the land and all the promises. And uh, we want you to know that we are so thankful for you to come on. Can we give it up? Come on. Can we show our appreciation for Pastor Doug? You can, you can be seated. If we could have our ushers prepare themselves and come forward this morning. We have so many exciting things happening next week. So next week is our official grand opening Sunday. You don't want to miss it. We want to make sure that you invite all of your neighbors, all your co-workers, all of your friends to come. We don't want an empty seat in this place for our grand opening Sunday. Can we agree to make sure this place is packed out next Sunday? Amen, amen. Another exciting aspect of next Sunday is water baptism. We already have more than 50 people signed up for water baptism. It's going to be an incredible Sunday. If you have not been water baptized, we want to encourage you, download the Multiply Church app, sign up that way, and be a part of the greatest celebration next Sunday. It's going to be so incredible. You don't want to miss out on that celebration. But as we have spoken about, that is because of your generosity and faithfulness for 60 plus years that we are even in this building today. And so we thank you as the church, as the members of this church, right? This is Dedication Sunday. This is for, for you that have been a part of this church, that call this church home. Thank you for your generosity. We thank you for that because we're building on that for the future of this church. Amen. Amen. And so there's four ways that you can give. You can give on our Multiply Church app. You can give online. You can text to give. You can also give through our ushers this morning, our pastor around the plates and the receptacles in the back. And so I'm going to ask you to stand one more time as we read our giving statement and head back into worship in just a moment. So our giving statement is from Malachi chapter 3 this morning. Let's read it together. By returning my tithe and offerings to the storehouse, I declare that this act of faith and obedience is bringing abundance and provision in my house. The Lord is opening heaven over my life. He is pouring out more blessings than I can contain. The Lord is protecting the fruit in my life and will bring it to the fullness of harvest. The nations will rise and call me blessed and I will live in a delightful land. Amen. Can we give him a praise, a shout of praise this morning?
invitation today, church. Sing Christ. As our altar team comes and gets into place, you know, this house, I'm not just talking about this building, but I'm talking about this church 65 years ago was built on prayer. It was built on prayer. And Joy, I, I can't, and Miss Betty, I can't help but think about 65 years ago, Pastor Tom going door to door in this community, asking people how he could pray for people. And we continue that legacy each and every week in moments like this, when we just simply say, how can we pray for you? I don't know what you came in this morning dealing with, whether it be a physical, whether it be emotional, whatever miracle you need. One thing I want you to know about this house, what it means to be a Pentecostal church, is we believe everything God did in the book of Acts, everything God did in the Bible, he's still doing today. 
So whatever your need is today, as we continue to sing, would you take a step of faith and would you allow us to join with you in prayer and believe for the miraculous in your life today? Come on, let's step out in faith today.
house of healing. This is a house of healing. I heard two things um, this morning from the Lord. I heard cornea. The Lord's healing somebody's cornea right now in this house in the name of Jesus. And then joint pain, joint pain, somebody with joint pain. And the Lord's just been stirring these things up and, and we'll do this at some point, but the testimonies are coming in in case you're wondering like, well, are people getting healed? They, they really are. And people are having words of knowledge. And like Pastor Steve talked about, that's just really what we believe is the spirit empowered church. That if you read it in the Bible, you're like, we believe, we actually believe that. We believe Jesus still does miracles. He does healings. He gives words of knowledge. He operates in the prophetic. So, so every, we don't, we'll have special services, but church, you got to know every week, this is a house of healing. Every week, this is a house of strength. Every week, this is a house of miracles. And so Father, in the name of Jesus, we seal those prayers that have been prayed by the blood of Jesus. There have been breakthrough already at this altar. There's been healings in this house in the name of Jesus. Somebody's cornea is being repaired right now in the name of Jesus. Knit those nerve cells back together. I pray you wouldn't have to have surgery. I pray that now when you walk out the sunlight, the sunlight used to bother you, the sunlight's not gonna bother you. You might, you might not know you were fully healed until you walk out into the parking lot and the things that used to cause you a little bit of discomfort are not gonna cause you discomfort any longer in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are the healer. You're the restorer. You're the God of miracles in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hey, if you believe that, give him one more shout of praise in this house and you may be seated. Well, welcome home, Multiply. Welcome home, Multiply. Let's go to 1 Kings chapter 8, 1 Kings chapter 8. When you say welcome home, it can be an, an interesting statement, especially when you walk into like a brand new place, yeah. <laughs> right? Because there's, there's part of you like, this feels like home, and part of you like, I don't know where to park, <laughs> and we're in my seat. I mean, you think you're thrown off, I'm thrown off. I take attendance by where you sit, and now it's all like, I've got, I got to relearn, I got to relearn all, all of this, but there's, but home, home is more about more than just a place, home is, home is relationships, right? I remember 18 years old, I went from Northwest Pennsylvania to Lakeland, Florida. First time I was on the campus as a freshman was my first day, like as I'm, as I'm registering. I, I didn't do a pre-visit, we didn't, we didn't have, have that. I just showed up and, 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 and so the biggest, the biggest thing, the biggest culture shock is this Yankee boy. Now you gotta understand, let me preface that, hold on. Let me preface this because I'm gonna lose people already. I got, I got converted to Jesus at five and I got converted to the South at 25, okay? So I'm all in, barbecue, sun drop, sweet tea, like all, all of the above. <laughs> but, but at that time, this 18 year old was hearing things. I went, I went, y'all, I went from a yinzer. Anybody know what a yinzer is? That's what they call Western Pennsylvania. Yins, what are yins doing, right? I mean, everybody else is like, what, what is that? A, what does that mean? We don't know. What's that? A, at least y'all is a contraction. Yins, yuns, yous got like, yous guys makes anyway. I went from yinzer to y'all. It's a little bit, it's a little bit of culture shock. <laughs> I remember walking into breakfast. I'm looking at the, what's being served for breakfast. I said, what is white gravy? Why are they putting it on a biscuit? And I'm pretty sure Polly Witherup would not approve this as a breakfast food. Like all of, all of these thoughts. Understand, now I recognize it is spirit-inspired manna from heaven. Like I get, I get that, but at the time, all of this culture shock. I remember going home Christmas, and I forget the, the turn of events, that, but one of the first places, I think maybe even before I went to my house, I pulled into my grandparents' house. You remember one of those moments, I don't know if you were like away serving in the military or away at college or, or just a, a long vacation or a long business trip, but there's something about walking back into a place that feels familiar, the, the sights and the sounds, but here, here's what did it for me. It was my grandpa Moore. 
He was a bigger guy, and he could bear hug with the best of them. And he pulled me in, and that 18-year-old kid that was still trying to figure out calling and figure out life and figure out new relationships and friendships and all of those things. Why? Because there's something about presence with people that can take any space and make it feel like home. What are we saying welcome home to? Three, Three things this morning. We are welcoming everybody home and dedicating this house to be a house of the presence of God. A house of the presence of God. First Kings chapter 8. Solomon then summoned to Jerusalem the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes and the leaders of the ancestral families. And they were to bring the ark of the Lord's covenant to the temple from its location in the city of David. Aren't you thankful that God's manifest presence travels? It was also known as Zion. So all the men of Israel assembled before King Solomon at the annual festival of shelters. When the elders of Israel arrived, the priests picked up the ark. And then the priest carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant into the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and placed it beneath the wings of the cherubim. When the priest came out of the holy place, a thick cloud filled the temple of the Lord, and the priest could not continue their service because of the cloud. The glorious presence of the Lord filled the house, and we say, God, come. We say, Holy Spirit, come. We say, manifest your presence. We understand that God is omnipresent. God is everywhere on this earth at once. That's the omnipresence. And yet, experiences like this in the dedication of the temple, when God's glory for lack of a better term, gets thick. God dwells among us. It's really the theme of Scripture. In Eden, in the tabernacle, the temple, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. The Holy Spirit, the new heaven and new earth. Revelation 21.3, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He shall dwell with them. Pastor Rick, I was... We were scrolling last night after a, after a long week and tired, and I had, I had I'd been eating pretty good, but, but I had pizza and Amazon Prime. And one of the first movies that came on Amazon Prime was, I don't know, if it's, is it still your favorite? Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams. And Cameron and I watched that, and the famous line in Field of Dreams is, if you build it, it is. I know. It's not if you build it, they will come. It's if you build it, he will come. And there's a couple of layers to that in the movie. But once the he comes, then the people come. And I I started thinking about that. I love the quote. I don't know who first said it. But they said, don't design your church services to attract people. Design your church services to attract Almighty God, and God will attract the people. If you build it, he will will come. God will come. God's power will come. God's presence will come. God's glory will come. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, marriages get healed. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, teenagers find their purpose. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, miracles. Miracles happen on a regular basis. Bible says this in Ezekiel, in the name of the city, prophesying the new city, the new heaven, meeting the new earth. So think about this. This is a prophetic word by Ezekiel, when the new heaven meets the new earth. What are we supposed to pray? On earth as it is in heaven. So this is what we're doing. We are pulling heaven to earth. The prophetic word from Ezekiel is, and the name of the city from that time on shall be the Lord is there. I don't know about you. That would be a great thing to name this house. Multiply Church. What do you know about Multiply Church? The Lord is there. The Lord is there. Like, I I hope some people say, hey, they have good music there. They have good kids ministry. But if people say multiply church, the Lord is there. May that be said of this house. And so we declare, we prophetically declare that this is a house of the presence of the Lord, a house of encounter, that people will sense the presence of God driving by and in the parking lot. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. This is a house where addictions fall, generational chains break. 
break. This is a house of the miraculous. This is a house of power and of praise. Prophetic worship and prophetic words will be released from here to the nations. This is not just an open building, but this is an open heaven in the name of Jesus. Church, this is not a moment, this is a movement. This is not an event, this is a new era. Today, we are crossing a threshold of blessing, peace, joy, and righteousness, and I believe that we are stepping into the greatest harvest that Multiply Church has ever seen. If you believe that, can you say amen to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and can we welcome Dr. Rick Ross as he comes to the platform at this time. Pastor Rick, this house is also going to be, Pastor Rick and Susan, this house is also going to be a house of blessing for people. Yeah. A house of blessing for people. Good morning. We've come today on behalf of the North Carolina Assemblies of God, 265 churches. And I must say, we are most invested in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Time, prayer, finances, presence. We love this church. So today we've come to present a gift, and I'm going to ask you not to stand. You're welcome. <laughs> today, Pastor Doug Witherup, congratulations to you and the congregation of Multiply Church upon the dedication of this beautiful facility. May God bring more and more people to receive Jesus this day. Amen. God bless you. So Pastor Rick, this is going to be a house of blessing for people. Verse 54, when Solomon finished making these prayers and petitions to the Lord, he stood up in front of the altar of the Lord where he had been kneeling with his hands raised toward heaven. He stood and in a loud voice blessed the entire congregation. Bless the Lord, all my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. There is a blessing for the people who trust God who are faithful to that which he has called them, who believe that he is the originator and the finisher of everything that needs to be. This house is a house of blessing for the people. Over 65 years ago, you know the story. I'll keep it quick. One man, one woman, a family made a decision to obey God. A dream, a crazy dream, an impossible dream, a dream that he could have no control over came into his spirit, and we're seeing the fulfillment of today. But it didn't just happen because he had a dream. And I assure you, it didn't just happen because we have a mighty God who can do all things, because he can't. Did I just say that? He can't do what we won't let him do. And in his travelings, when Jesus was on this earth, he did many things except where they had unbelief, except where they said, not in my house, except when they said, we're not sure we're ready to trust this guy. Then this facility was purchased. Huh. Bill won. <laughs> And all of hell tried to stop the move to this side. And today we are crossing over. Amen. To God be the glory, of course. But hear me. Because of faithful people. God's plan always involves you yes. and me. Yes. Three thoughts. If you've been around a while, you've heard these three things. Number one, 
a house of blessing for the people demands that we understand that every believer, say every, every, every believer is a minister. Say it with me. Every believer every. is a minister. Every. Number two, every minister every. must have a ministry. Every. Therefore, every. If, you are a, if you are a believer without a ministry, I question your Christianity. We, we say it this way. This, you know, this is now my superintendent talk. This is a voluntary cooperative fellowship. But the moment you cease to cooperate, Doug, you cease to be part of the fellowship. There's a spirit in the house that demands all in. That demands us, you and me, all of us from the generations past to the generation that is here. It still blows my mind that I am 20 years younger than Pastor Tom and you are basically 20 years younger than me. You don't have much time. Do it quickly because there's somebody else coming. I mean, I remember the plane ride. We're on a plane. I don't know where we're going. Doug, what do you want to do with the rest of your life? And he writes me a note. I want your job. <laughs> I have it someplace. I don't know where, but I, I have it someplace. <laughs> A house of the presence without the people is a worthless house. Listen, I grew up in this stuff. I'm the preacher's kid. I was in the parsonage next door. I was left in the church on the pew sleeping, woke up in the middle of the night. And I'm here to tell you from experience in a great house of the blessing of God without any people. It's a spooky place and there's no blessing there. The blessing of God on this house is always in and through us the people because that's how God always operates. When the people of God hear the voice of God and do the will of God, the power of God will establish itself. I close with one last thought. Crossed over. Take a breath. But this is not the end. It's just the beginning of a new journey. There's a pretty church on the seaside with steeples still attached. When all the cars drive by it, they don't know what they've just passed. No fancy sign, one service time, and the doors often unlocked. It's the first place that I saw. Tell me there wasn't healing in those walls. You couldn't tell me angels didn't walk those halls on a Wednesday night, Sunday morning. We didn't have much, but Jesus loved it. If you want to know why I am the way I am, it's a church I grew up. There's tear stains in the carpet, communion in the back. And none of us were perfect, but we all tried our best. A mother's prayer still in the air of the ones who've walked away. And the only thing that kept us was God.
Yes, it is. How many of you are thankful for the church that you grew up in? How many of you want to build that church for your kids and grandkids? How many of you know there's 175,000 people in Cabarrus County alone that need that kind of church? Let's be that church. Let's continue to be that church. If, Pastor Rick, that's the, the word that we've been preaching, God's ready if we are. If we are. If we get involved in ministry, what are the two questions? Where are you serving? Who are you bringing? Where are you serving? Who are you bringing? That's why Connect Center every week. Well, I miss, I miss getting involved in ministry. No, go to the Connect Center today. Every minister must have a ministry. Every believer is a ministry. Every minister must have a ministry. Jump in today. What a better day than on the dedication Sunday to say, I'm not going to sit on the sidelines any longer. Like, I want to I be a part of this. I want to be a part of a, of a movement, of a move of God. And then, who are you bringing? It's not many empty seats in the house today and I'm grateful there's a few who are you, who are you going to bring in those seats I found that I've never I've never 26 years of preaching I've never had an empty seat respond to the gospel never not once but I've seen a lot of people who people have brought respond to the gospel it's a house of blessing it's a house of presence of God it's a house of blessing for God's people and then finally this is going to be a house and going to continue to be a house where the lost are saved a house where the lost are saved the Bible the Bible says this final part of that amazing blessing when Solomon was dedicating the temple but verse 60 says this then people all over the earth will know that the Lord alone is God and there is no other. 
This house is not just for us. This house is for the city. This house is for the nations. This house is for the, har the harvest. Whosoever will may come. Church, the gospel is not anything goes, but it is everyone gets an invitation. So who, who are you inviting? The close of that movie of Field of Dreams, Ray, the main character, he's talking to author, this author, Terrence Mann. Terrence said, was asking him about his childhood, and he said, Ray turns to Terrence and he said, when I was 17, when I was 17, I said some horrible things to my dad. I walked out and I never came back. And then he said this line. He said, I kept wanting to go home, just didn't know how. There's 175,000 people in our county that they don't know what they're looking for, but they want, they want to go home. They want to be home. They want family. They want freedom. They want, they want purpose. They want what we have. Let's show them the way home. Let's bring them home. Heads bowed and eyes closed all over this house today. Maybe there's somebody in this house. You say, Pastor, I've, I've walked away from the Father. I've been wanting to come back home, and I just don't know how. Can I, can I tell you his name is Jesus? That's how. You don't have to earn your way back to heaven. Jesus already did it. He paid the price on the cross. The way home is Jesus. The way home is the forgiveness of Jesus. And so maybe you've never given your life to Jesus. Maybe you've never felt like you were truly home and you've spent your life. You feel like you're walking around, but you're not awake. You're going through the motions, but you're not alive. And today on this dedication Sunday, you would say, Pastor, I don't want to walk out of another service without making sure that I I am right with Jesus. I'm going to count to three just as a point of reference. I don't want you to hesitate. If you need a relationship with Jesus this morning, I want you to shoot your hand up high. I'll see it. I'll acknowledge it. You can put it down and we'll pray with you right at your seat. One, pastor, I'm not home. Two, pastor, I want to get my life right with Jesus. Three, come on, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior this morning, would you just lift a hand? I'm just going to scan the floor. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Who else? Up into the terrace seating there. You just lift a hand. Who else? Online, community, would you just drop a, 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 a word in there in the chat and somebody will be with you and pray with you. That's why we do this, church, to welcome people home, to welcome people home. There are people right now that raise their hand that are going from death to life. So as a church family, what we do in this moment is we surround them. We say you're not alone. We say that we are going to pray this prayer with you. So let's all stand to our feet. And as I lead this prayer out loud, would you say this? Would you repeat this after me? Just say, Jesus. I come to the cross. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I ask you to come into my life and help me to live wide awake to the love of God and fully alive to my purpose. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, church. Let's celebrate with those that have gone from death to life today. Amen. Well, I hope the service today made a difference in your life. And if you made a decision to follow Jesus, we would love to know. All you have to do is download the app and click Next Steps. We've got resources we'd love to give you as you begin your journey in following Him. Well, we did it. We're in the new building. Yes. That's in fact, yes. we're in the control room. We're in the video control room for all things video. We've got control. All of control issues happen and they start in this room. Yeah, that, that sounds more like so it. So many issues. Yeah. There's about 20 people and this whole room, all the things going on the screens. And to get you the feed for online, we do it for you because we love you online, fam. We do. And it's super, super cool. Super cool. Mm -hmm. So we got to go because we got to launch a space shuttle in a minute. Yes, it does feel like we're in the movies. We're about to do that. So mm -hmm. like, see you next week. It does kind of seem like Alien could come. We'd be the first to know. Because it would be on the screen. So now we'll see next week. And then nope. there's like a little Please light. And depending on what color it is, it'll be like, mm -hmm. you're in code red, code red. Yeah, we have a red and a blue light. They're actually over there. Oh, really? Yeah, you can go there. grab them if you want. They're right there oh, on the other side. You see them? You can go turn them on. You just put a switch at the bottom. Oh, just whenever there's a problem, we 
I think we should just have it going regularly. Turn the lights out. Turn it on. And then we... Be fun! That's, that's a party. Okay, but now it's cold blue and red. And I, that means... What does that mean? I don't know. Nothing? Okay. <laughs> you got it out of your system I now? did, I got it. But I wanted over the thing to say code red. But I like orange to be one of them. It is. Oh, okay. We just don't have an orange yeah. light. Mm -hmm. So over the next couple weeks, we'll give you a tour of the facility. Yeah, we can meet some people, show you the behind the scenes. It's going to be fun. It will be. So for real this time, we'll see you next week. Yeah, see you next week.